The theme of this year's conference, I'm sure, has been going on in some of your brains for a while. GIS as an intelligent nervous system. And this is not a new idea, it's an old idea, but it's also a new idea. This notion is built on the metaphor of the human nervous system. It's essential, as all of you know, to our life. One might say it's our most important organ. And it's an organ in, that does more than simply stimulus response. It's intelligent. It integrates data from many sources. Sound familiar? It couples that data with logic and reasoning, ethics, values, and in some cases, emotions. And then it carries out coordinated response. This isn't like one hand, it's both hands, or all in, often. And it's also learning continuously. We have an experience, we have a memory, and we learn, we remember it, and we grow. It's kind of an evolutionary thing with us as humans, or at least most of us learn. <laughs> Some of us never learn, but uh, it's true. Isn't it a beautiful thing when you think about it? Our world resembles a living organism. It's complex. It's all interconnected as an ecosystem. It's self-healing and resilient, and it's always changing. And humans, like you and me, are fundamentally part of that ecosystem. Our digital technologies today are literally transforming our world. They're enabling us as humans, our species, to be enormously successful. We're co-evolving with this technology, and it's really fantastic. It's enabling us to make huge advancements in science, in communication, in be becoming connected. And at the same time, it's accelerating everything. It's changing how we think. It's reshaping our very existence. And one only can look at young children doing this to know that they are co-evolving as this technology evolves. And this evolution is, at the same time, rapidly changing our world. Today, our human footprint is creating many challenges for all of us, you as individuals and your organizations, and the broader society. We're overpopulated today. We're losing biodiversity at a rapid rate. We're on the frontiers of some of the challenges of water and food. This kind of unconstrained development, if we project it out, well, it's just not sustainable. It's really not sustainable. And that's our big challenge and the big dilemma today. Our world needs something like our human nervous system, a kind of nervous system that's intelligent and responsive, that creates fundamentally, as Richard Saul Werman says often, more understanding and more collaboration and more systematic action, collaborative action. And from my personal perspective, geography is essential to make that happen. Geography, your science, our science, is the science of our world. It provides all the rich content, biological content, geologic content, sociological content, all the ologies content, as well as a common reference system, which is close to our human experience. And it helps us see. It helps us see complexity and relationships and patterns. This is why people love maps. And this science brings it all together in this most remarkable way. It helps us understand. And it helps us intelligently respond. Now, the science of where, which is basically digital geography and GIS, provides us a kind of framework 
and process. Similar to our brains, we sense, we understand, and we respond. We sense through measurements, geographic measurements. We see through visualization and mapping. We model relationships and patterns, make projections, interpret things holistically, and then plan, design, take it to action, make better decisions. This is the foundation of your work. And it's also the foundation for a geographic or geospatial nervous system. And your work provides the evidence of this. It may be patchy, one part or another part, focused just in your single organization. But for many of you, it's already creating geospatial infrastructure, a kind of digital nervous system for your own organization, your city, your utility, your school. And this is an intelligent system that's responsive. I'm going back to the fundamental definitions of a nervous system. It also integrates all sources of data, and it connects, like we do in our brain, everything and everyone in organizations. It applies the science of where. Now, your work is also contributing, directly or indirectly, to a kind of global geospatial infrastructure, sharing apps, uh, going back to the purpose of this meeting, sharing your experience, sharing data, sharing your knowledge, linking your projects into infrastructure, using the infrastructure's resources and contributing to it, creating a system for understanding and collaborative action. Isn't that beautiful? It's actually beautiful to me. This geospatial infrastructure supports individuals, but it also supports organizations of all sizes. And it's evolving rapidly, connecting things, much like the web did in the 90s. I like to describe it as GIS at scale. All the fundamental sciences and tools that you've been pioneering for these years are stepping up to a distributed network of interconnected systems. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is powerful for GIS professionals. It helps you access networks of distributed services, content, modeling, being able to publish and share, real-time measurements are becoming integrated into the fabric. This is very powerful for you. But it's also, it's also the foundation for delivering powerful capabilities across your organizations. And many of you are doing this through apps, the kind of building blocks for this responsive system, making it available, engaging people both ways. Supporting geospatial enabled systems. These are beyond apps. This complete sort of independent solutions for indoors and urban planning and conservation and business analytics. So we're seeing, I'm trying to tell you a story that this infrastructure, which is rapidly growing, is about bringing it all together. It's about bringing it together and interconnecting and engaging communities, something that we'll hear from Jane Goodall about this afternoon. Citizens, participants, governments, NGOs, and engaging them through maps and your good work. It's also about integrating the new frontiers of science, open science, open software tools, using Python notebooks to be able to access and integrate and bring science together for all of us. It's also about extending GIS to the edge, which is a kind of, you know, modern phrase, with distributed edge computing and in edge devices. What does this mean, actually? It means like having a complete GIS system in the jungle or in the middle of a hurricane or on a vehicle. It means being able to take these new smart cars and have them take pictures and automatically, in the car, recognize things and send a message over to 
a master system for updating signs and updating situations. This infrastructure is also, as we'll see through the day, transforming organizations. It's interconnecting data and systems for all types, all happening at the same time. It's using location as a common key to bring together heterogeneous systems. This is very powerful. This is like no other IT has ever done. And it's just beginning. It's not just a dream. In the city of Abu Dhabi, for example, they have brought together over 170 different agencies all working at this pace. The Ordnance Survey in the UK has literally transformed their own operations, saving enormous amounts of money, integrating information, and providing a common foundation for their country, serving their country with much more automated and up-to-date information. In the city of Raleigh, North Carolina, the, under the mayor's leadership, they've connected GIS operations with their citizens. And in, right here in Southern California, as some of you might know, the gas company has not only become more responsive internally, but they are responding to external challenges like fires, floods, and so on. So this is also extending beyond single organizations like FEMA, uh, our Federal Emergency Management Agency is connecting with Red Cross, saving people's lives during emergencies and disasters. This is really amazing to me, and it's only beginning. These responsive geospatial infrastructures are integrating citizen science, 311. This powerful example by Walgreens is sharing their point-of-sale data about selling flu, flu medicines as an open web map, and it's showing the world where flu is much faster than our government is. And in San Francisco, they're communicating the fundamental policy of their future city with citizens. And in Rotterdam, everything that moves and changes is integrated with the IoT and now running the port in more efficient ways. And again, let me simply acknowledge the UN for their leadership in connecting with statistical agencies around the world to create a future which is more sustainable. The geospatial revolution is just beginning. And this geospatial nervous system that's going to emerge is going to profoundly transform our world. Like our nervous system, it'll be intelligently responding. And only in your mind can you imagine the power of what this is going to bring. But this is not just a technology thing. It's not going to be driven by some, just some mere technology things. Your work, the very knowledge that you have gained and experienced in your personal organization's work is essential. It'll take leadership. It'll take envisioning what's possible. It's going to take learning and sharing and collaborating just like you do now. Strategic thinking, engaging communities, getting it together, and also, above all, a passion for creating this vision of better understanding and a better world, leveraging this science to see what others can't. <laughs>